with the beginning of the Cambrian period we talked about earlier, we had, we were in the Paleozoic area. But now we hit the Mesozoic area as Pangaea is fully formed. All right, so that is what you need to actually know about the Mesozoic area, which is the area that stands from 250 million years. Now, if you actually fast forward a little more, you will see that Pangaea actually shifts a little higher and becomes a little bigger, accreting more and more pieces of continent. The Tethys Sea that used to be here, uh, now scientists call this piece the Tethys Sea, and that piece kind of closed up as these pieces are moving north that way, and the Tethys Sea actually is opened up to Pentalassa, and you have this one ginormous supercontinent all over the world, and dinosaurs are now spreading all over the place. We are in what we call the Triassic period, and Pangaea will now start to break apart around this time because the massive amount of pressure that is put on this supercontinent will force it to crack in several pieces and you will see that the first cracks will take place over here between the pieces that used to belong to Nina and the pieces that used to belong to Guanduana and then a subsequent crack will stretch through here more cracks will happen through here and now these will form the oceans of today so let's keep track of that as we talk about the destruction of Pangaea which will actually separate the dinosaurs as we hit these things. By the end of this Triassic period, when Pangaea starts to break, by the way, is when we have the formation of the first mammals on Earth. All right, And they will coexist with dinosaurs for a while, but we're talking about very small little mammals. So around 200 million years, the first animals, mammals start to develop, and Pangaea already starts breaking apart. Notice also there's another rift forming up here, and this rift is going to become the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, another rift will happen here and it will become the Indian Ocean and let's see how that kind of looks like as we talk about the destruction of Pangaea accelerating from the end of the Tri Triassic period into the Jurassic period by the way there was another ma mass extinction that happened around this time between the Triassic and the Jurassic maybe caused by volcanic eruptions because of Pangaea's uh, separation or caused by massive meteor strikes or caused by ch climate change or caused by disease that spread we don't we can't be sure exactly what caused it but we know that a combination perhaps of all these things caused lots of dinosaurs to go extinct and new dinosaurs to take over the land so now we hit the Jurassic period around 150 million years this is how it, it looked by the end of the Jurassic period and you notice how a rift is actually extending in the North Atlantic is forming already the southern Atlantic has not yet formed, and the India step actually hasn't formed yet. We still have the Tethys Sea over here and everything. But notice that these pieces here that were never really part of Pangaea are kind of gathering together, and they're going to become part of South, South Asia of today, which includes North China and the so North Korea and South Korean Cretans, the Southeastern Asia Cretans, and lots of those Indonesian islands of today. And they will eventually collide here with Laurasia to form the... Asia that we recognize today. By the way, Laurasia is the name that we give to the big piece that separated from, from the Pangaea. Now we have two big pieces, right? This piece here we're going to call Gondwana land, and this piece up there we call Laurasia. Now Laurasia would actually split into the North American continent and the Eurasian plate, and it will also gather pieces from, from these shatter stuff to form Asia of today. Then subsequently Gondwana land is going to split into pieces as well and we're going to see this happening as we fast forward from the end of the Jurassic where another mass extinction is going to happen at some point and allowing new kinds of dinosaurs to come through the end of the Cretaceous. By the way, by now the first birds are evolving at the, at the end of the Jurassic period. So birds actually evolved after the first mammals evolved. So fast forward a little bit more around another 100 million years or so and you are in the middle of the Cretaceous period where most of the dinosaurs seen in Jurassic Park some of them are actually from the Triassic or Jurassic but a lot of the dinosaurs are actually from the Cretaceous the big big thing that happens in the Cretaceous is the evolution of flowering plants so now we have flowering plants co-occurring the world which makes plants spread even more and diversify even more and the first modern birds will appear out as well throughout this period and at the end of this period, we're going to have the extinction of the dinosaurs around 65 million years ago. And most people agree it was probably because of a massive, massive meteor that hit in for, uh, the, the area which is now the Yucatan Peninsula right there. But anyways, notice what happened over the last 100 million years or so throughout the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. The rift that started in the North Atlantic 
actually ended up separating the Eurasian plate from the North American plate, and it actually extended to separate Gondwana land into South American and African plates. Also, notice that the pieces of Gondwana land separated even further into to form what is now the Indian Ocean, because the African plates separated from the Antarctic plate and the Australian plates and the Indian plates. You see, and also pieces of Madagascar were separating there as well. So all of these rifts are going to cause separation of these plates. Now notice that India will now start to shift towards the north over there and will eventually start hitting, will end up hitting Asia. The same thing will happen here. Notice a piece up there that is, is going to become the Balkans and Italy is also separating from, from the African plate and is going to end up hitting Eurasian plate as well. That is going to end up forming the mountains of southern Europe. And as, as these collisions will take place here and those pieces are going to collide into Europe and India is also going to collide up there, you're going to form the Himalayas. All right. Meanwhile, this whole piece here is being shifted to the left forcing this to collide with the pieces of, of what we now call the Pacific, which is the remnants of the large Pentalassan Ocean that we used to have. By the way, the Tethys Sea would develop into the uh, Indian Ocean of today. And the Atlantic Ocean is growing at new. It's a brand new ocean. There's nothing that wasn't there before at all. And that's most of the, te the Atlantic Ocean that's growing there. But the Pacific Plate is going to be colliding with the North American Plate and South American Plate, which, which will start forming the Rocky Mountains and the Andean Mountains down here. So, by the way, notice that how the separation of Gondwana land happened in the bottom at the same time that North American and Laurasian plates were actually splitting. So you see how Gondwana lands kind of shattered into several pieces, which now are Antarctica, Australia, India, South America, and Africa. As so you can see that, that shattering taking place. Now, fast forward another 30 million years or so, we're definitely now in what we call a new era, or a new, a new uh, era of the world, which you call the Cenozoic Era. That, that is marked by the extinction of the dinosaurs at 65 million years ago. And throughout the Cenozoic area, it's 65 million years from now, it kind of looks like it looks today, right? India already shifted north quite a bit. And you see that it's actually almost hitting Asia. Asia the South, South Asia is almost completely formed. The pieces of North Korea and South Korea are already integrating and hitting Asia, forming mountain ranges on that area as well, new Oregons. Italy is almost hitting... Um, Europe creating another mountain range there as well. So you see the subside formation of those things. The Rocky Mountains and the Andes are continuing to growing. And you also have Australia now separating from Antarctica that's going to become in the bottom. And you have the formation of a new rift starting to form right here between the pieces of Africa and Arabia. And that would eventually cause the Red Sea, which is still growing today. So if you fast forward a little bit more through the Cenozoic area, we will talk more about that area when we do the areas. But lots of cool things happen. Large mammals, uh, primates, carnivores are, are going to start taking over since those dinosaurs all died. And it, this, these mammals and birds are going to start taking over the land. And... You also have the, the development of grasslands and things like that. You have big ice ages that happen at the end uh, throughout the period. And all of these things will be changing the history of the uh, life on Earth. But we'll talk more about that in detail when we do the, the era topic. But as we fast forward a little bit more, we're going to have what ha happens today. The formation of Asia is now completed. And you see all those pieces are kind of together now. Australia has moved away completely from Antarctica to almost join the pieces of South Asia. You want to have the Arabian Peninsula kind of splitting from Africa, and that's actually happening there. Italy has completely integrated itself with Europe, and you have the formation of the Southern Europe Mountains. The Himalayas are formed there almost completely by now. The Rocky Mountains and Andes are looked the way they look today, and so forth. And the Atlantic Ocean, of course, continues to grow, becoming bigger and bigger at the expense of the, of the Pacific Ocean becoming smaller and smaller, even though there is actually a crack over here, which is actually making the Pacific Ocean a little bit bigger. And the Indian Ocean continues to, to grow, and we have nothing left of the Tethys Sea, which pretty much kind of integrated itself into the Pacific Ocean by now. And you see, that's kind of how it looks today. Now, if this process continues over millions and millions of years, what is going to happen is that these pieces of the continent here are going to continue moving that way, and these pieces will continue moving that way, and they will probably meet each other on the other side and form another supercontinent, who knows, maybe 300 million years from now or so. And so you see the supercontinent cycle is marked by changes to the geological history of the Earth, which also match changes in biology of the Earth and the atmosphere of the Earth and the oceans of the world. So it's all one big thing, all right? And that's the supercontinent cycle. I hope you learned a lot. 
and now you have today the world's plates the way it looks today and we talked about and that is plate tectonics which explains why the plates are moving and why they're moving the way they're moving today now notice some, some interesting things that India will continue to go into the Eurasian plate and perhaps completely subduct underneath um, because the Nazca plate is splitting you're gonna have a little bit of growth in the Pacific Ocean but Pacific Ocean is shrinking as the Atlantic Ocean is growing in between over here and you're also gonna have the continued formation of more mountain ranges in those in this big area here because you're gonna the Pacific Ocean is going to be forced to shrink as it collides with the North America and South American plates. And you also have notably the Filipino plate right in the middle here is probably going to end up shrinking completely as well because of, of these plates kind of going against each other because that's the overall direction that things are going. The Arabian plate will continue to separate from the African plate so that's a rift that's forming. This might be a, a, an ocean might grow here in the future. You also have evidence that Africa is breaking apart right here. We're going to talk about that when we do earthquakes later in the year. So there might be a, a big ocean that actually stretches and separates Africa even more. And God knows what's going to happen to that piece. It might join India and Asia. Who knows? It all depends on how this ends up moving. And so plate tectonics is the process by which continents change their positions and plates move around the earth. And we learned a lot about this this chapter and I hope you, you um, a master now of this. All right. I'll see you on the next topic where we're going to be talking about deformations of the crust.